Hey everybody, welcome back to Photorec.tv. I'm Toby, and this weekend, I reformatted my Mac. And then I realized that I hadn't backed up my export presets. And then I realized that this would be a great time to make a video about my export presets, how I build them, how I use them to export beautiful images to Instagram and Facebook, print, stock photography, and use export presets as kind of an ultimate backup solution. Wanted to take a moment and tease a full review coming of this. This is the BenQ 321C. It is a 4K 32 inch monitor capable of 100% sRGB and a bunch of other specs that are really impressive and basically boil down to if you get a print looking good on here on the monitor, it's going to look good when it comes out of the printer. In fact, it even has the ability to talk directly to your printer and set up profiles for print matching. So that if you've got a certain printer in your house, you can get that profile running on this monitor and know that it's going to come out looking like what you see. That's always a challenge when you're editing your photos. I've been working on this for the last week or so. Love it. It's just absolutely gorgeous, an absolute dream to work on. There's just so much fun detail in this monitor. And of course, those accurate colors right out of the box are lovely. So as I said, full review coming soon watch for that. You can hit that little subscribe plus the little bell to be notified of future videos about this monitor or any of the gear that I review here at photorec.tv. But now let's dive into these export presets. As I said, I wiped my iMac clean and then when I went to export it in an Instagram picture after I had reinstalled Lightroom, uh, oh, I didn't back up my user presets. So let's build those now. Let's start with the Instagram slash social media. I used to have separate ones for Instagram and Facebook. Honestly, I don't think it matters that much. Uh, one for both of those seems to be just fine. So that's the first thing we're going to build. Uh, we're going to export to a specific folder. Now I've set up and I have a Google Drive folder called Instagrams that is uh, sitting there waiting to accept these images. And what's nice about using a synced folder like this is as soon as I put my image in there, it is available to me on my phone and on my other devices. So if I want to add to Instagram from my phone or go upstairs and drag from the laptop onto later.com, which is a great service, then I can easily do that. So Instagram is chosen. Dropbox would be another wonderful sync solution to get that onto all of your different devices. I do not rename my files out for social media. I leave them the original file name. It makes it really easy for me to go back and find these images later and match them up and say, oh, what was that image? And this, of course, I talk about getting a name like this on import and how important it is. So go watch that video if you haven't already. I'll link it right down below. File settings, it's gotta be a JPEG for social media. Quality, 82 seems to be great. 80 to 84, I think in that range is all good. Doesn't really seem to matter. You go higher than that and you may get compressed more by Instagram and Facebook than you want. Lower than that and you are gonna to start to notice some quality degradation. Color space, sRGB for anything online. Resize to fit. I just make this really easy. Long edge, 2000 pixels. There are some other suggestions of little specific, like 2048 or 1920. And again, this is going to both Instagram and Facebook. And I really don't see a difference when we do a small difference in size. I do want to check don't enlarge. It's incredibly rare that I'm going to be exporting out an image that is smaller than this amount. But if I do, I certainly don't want Lightroom to blow it up automatically for me. I want to be in charge of that. Resolution doesn't matter. Just leave it at 240. Output sharpening. Sharpen for screen. I put low. I typically do a sum sharpening in Lightroom, but uh, most of my images that are really special to me, they now go through Topaz Sharpen and they are sharpened just the right amount. So if I've known I've done that, I probably will come in and uncheck this. But in general, screen sharpening at the Lightroom export level is just fine. 
Metadata, I do like to have all of my metadata in these images. Sometimes I throw them up on other sites and sometimes those sites make use of the metadata. So I'd like that in there. If you're a little bit paranoid, you can remove person info if you're using that. That's where you're tagging the images and it's going to remove those names used. If you do not want to share locations ever or have any chance of anybody else finding those, you can check this box as well. Honestly, when it goes to Facebook, most of that information is stripped. On Instagram, it can help as you tag a location, but then of course, depending on the locations, you might not want to share those for many reasons, many valid reasons. So this is up to you. I don't watermark these images, so this is unchecked. And after export, I do want to show them in Finder. Now I've got all of these set the way I want. So I'm going to click add, and I'm just going to call this Insta slash FB. And it's going to be in my user presets folder, create. There it is. So anytime I want now, I can click done here. I can go to file, export preset, and of course, Insta slash FB is there. And if I did it with this image right here, it says, hey, you've already done that. I can overwrite it. It's going to take just a moment and it's going to export it. It's going to pop up and uh, it's then available. Now let's talk about an export preset for stock photography or for many of us for printing. So back to file, export dot, dot, dot. Now we're gonna come down here and this is up to you. So I like to choose a specific folder so I always know where files are going. This one I'm just going to put on my external drive and new folder, prints and such. Spell that right. Create choose. So it's going to land in there. Uh, and then I can do a subfolder that, you know, is going to be used each time if you want. Again, existing files, ask what to do. I always leave that. And I leave the files as they are. They can be longer names, but those are useful. Image format JPEG. If this is going to go off to a print house or a stock photography site, I take the quality to 100. I do still leave the color space sRGB. Now, if you've worked with a print house that you know and love, it's take, take some time to research how they can accept files. If you are sending an absolutely beautiful, gigantic print, then it might be worthwhile sending off a TIFF at a pro photo setting. But honestly, most of the time, a JPEG of high quality sRGB is going to be just fine. And I do recommend with good print houses, I use Bay Photo, love them. I always check their color correction box and I've always been happy with the way the prints come back. So don't stress about that. All right, JPEG sRGB quality 100, resize to fit? No, I'm just gonna leave this blank. Whatever size I'm exporting or whatever size I've cropped to in Lightroom, that's the size that the stock photography or the print house is going to get. Sharpen for, this is where you need to come in each time and decide, are you printing on matte paper or glossy paper? I do still keep the amount low. So even though we're setting up this preset, it will still need a little check-in from you each time you come in. Uh, if I'm printing on metal, I do choose glossy. If I'm printing on flat stock type papers, I'm much more likely to choose matte paper and low. Sometimes again, if I've run this through Topaz Sharpen, I'll even have this turned off completely because I've done all of the sharpening I want. Metadata really doesn't matter when you're sending off to print house, um, but when you're sending off to stock, if you've already added keywords, many good stock photography places are going to use those to help you pre-populate the kind of search terms for that image. So you may want those in there no watermarking, and I always leave after export, show and finder. So again, we're going to come over here and I'll call this print slash stock create. We're putting a lot of eggs into Lightroom's basket when we are using their catalog system and editing their pictures. If anything goes wrong with the catalog, we don't lose our photos, but we, call, we do lose the edits on those photos. And whether it's your error or computer error, and both of those have happened to me, the end result is the same. You lose a lot of hard work. And yes, I've got my Lightroom catalog backed up frequently. About once a month is my backup uh, 
rate for Lightroom. I also have it all backed up online, both the catalogs and all of my raw photos. So I'm really not worried about actually losing pictures at all. Um, but what is inconvenient is losing all of those edits or just kind of having to dig back through and find them. So what I like to do on some of my favorite photos after each trip, after each session, is export them as nice high quality JPEGs right back to the same folder where the originals are. So then I have sitting in there the original files and finished JPEG. Now I should put finished in quotes because if you're like me, you know, a few weeks after you finish editing a picture, you go back to it, you might want to edit again or a month or a year later. So they're never truly finished, but at least in somewhat of a finished state. And if I need to access those favorite photos, I don't have to go into Lightroom. And if anything happens to Lightroom, then I have these nice high quality JPEGs available to me to share out and open in any program at all. And as I was setting this back up, I thought, well, why don't I do DNGs? Uh, DNGs are kind of like the best of both worlds. You have this finished image, but it also contains within it all of your edits and is still editable. I'm going to stick with JPEGs for now, simply because of the ease of use, access, and file size. Uh, and because of the other backup systems I have in place, I feel pretty comfortable that I'm not going to lose this. And these are really just kind of quick to grab high quality JPEGs of some of my favorite photos, as I said. I'm being a little redundant, similar to my backup system. But I want to say all that because you might decide that DNGs are better for you. Export to, same folder as original folder. And I leave the file naming as is. They're going to sit right next to the originals. Uh, the image format is JPEG. I'm going to bring the quality down to 90. They don't need to be 100. Between 90 and 100, I see very little difference. Sure, if I'm sending off to a print house, I want the absolute best. But these are just kind of these backups. Resize, they're going to stay the same size. And sharpen for screen amount low. And I am going to keep all of the metadata in there. These are pictures that are private to me until I'm sharing them with the world. The more metadata they have, the more easily findable and searchable they are. And after export, I can show them in the finder just to make sure that everything's going. You might want to set this to do nothing because you know after export, they're now in there. And there is the ability to add them back to the catalog when you're done. I don't want to do that. I don't need to do that. I want to be able to go outside of Lightroom to find these pictures nicely and easily. And I don't need duplicate JPEGs in my catalog cluttering it up. But you might want to choose that. All right. So I'm going to click Add and call this um, JPEG Original Original Folder. Hmm. Maybe just one org. JPEG org folder. Create. All right, this last one I mentioned being a big fan of Google Photos and Google Drive. I really like Google Photos, and I like to put some of my favorite photos from Lightroom on Google Photos because of its awesome search capabilities. Not only can it search by any keywords that you've embedded in these images, but it can actually search by the contents of the photo themselves. Using its AI recognition system, it can tell whether this is a picture of a tree or a dog or my kid Henry. And when I search for those terms, tree, dog, Henry, it returns to me photos that I'm looking for. It's not perfect, but it is a, a really easy way to make your photos much more searchable without any work from you other than putting them up on Google Photos in the first place. Uh, and so I really appreciate that. It's a two-parter because one, you have to create a preset and two, you have to have the Google Photos sync and backup app running on your machine. And I'll show you those settings in just a second. So for this one, I want to choose a specific folder and I have a folder already selected on the external drive called Google Photos Backup. I leave it the original name. And again, if I've used descriptive text in that original name, that descriptive text will become part of the search terms that Google Photos can use. So if I search astrophotography, this photo, once it lands on Google Photos, will be available to me. Down here, image format, JPEG, quality 84. It's a nice kind of sweet spot. 
I do not resize these. These are going to go over large. And then within the Google Sync and Photo Backup app, I have it set to upload high quality, not original quality. I want to save a little space, and this is kind of extra. This isn't really backup for me. This is finding these images down the road a year from now or two years from now and enjoying them and, and maybe throwing them into back onto Instagram or sending them and sharing them with friends and family. It's not the source. Google Photos is not going to be the source of these images for sending off to print later. So I don't need to be I don't need them to be the ultimate resolution. Sharpen for screen low and I'm going to include all metadata. Anything that I've written in, any location information, any person information that I've put in Lightroom, I want Google Photos to be aware of as well. And of course, again, they're private to me unless I've done something, unless I choose to share them out from that location. I don't watermark, and after export, I don't do anything. So we're going to hit Add and call this Google Photos Backup. And so we're sitting on this image right here right now. Let's go ahead and hit Export. It's going to take a moment to export. Sitting up here, nope, not that one. Over here is this Google Photos uh, app. And you can see that I uploaded earlier today some different images to that folder, and it lets me know that it updates. And here's the one that I just exported updating now. This is a free app, and Google does give you a certain amount of free space. If you go into the Preferences, And you can see that right here on my iMac, I have set the Google Photos backup folder. This is a folder I created and then pointed this app at to upload. And it's backing up anything that lands in there, even raw files. On occasion, I might throw a raw file in of my very best work. And it's uploading these photos and videos in high quality. If you click that, you can say original quality, or high quality. The high quality benefit is it doesn't count against your overall quota. I believe it's a 12, no, 14 megapixel file that it gets reduced to. Absolutely perfectly fine for sharing with friends and family a year from now, five years from now. I have no issues about that. If you've got plenty of space and you want the ultimate quality up there, then certainly you could do original quality. You might think about adjusting that export preset so that it's uh, not the full, full resolution, but that'll be fine. And then down here, just check upload newly added photos and videos to Google Photos. You want to make sure they go to Google Photos and not Google Drive. So that's the settings I use here. You could do something very similar in Dropbox, and you could do something very similar in Amazon Photos. Those are all decent choices. I really like the search tools and power of Google Photos. That's it. I'd love to know what export preset would you suggest folks have in their little export preset window? You can leave that in the comments right down below. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe along with pressing that little bell to be notified of future videos, including review of this SW321C monitor. Link to more information about that is below. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.